Welcome to The Power of Now What, a podcast on overcoming the various challenges and problems that one encounters when on the spiritual path, when on a spiritual journey, when engaged in a practice or discipline such as meditation, and even post-awakening and post-enlightenment. This is episode 12 on the subject of healing from a past that doesn't exist. Now, I'm going to do a specific episode on the very difficult subject of childhood trauma. That's going to come later because it is different. It's a different problem. And when we are dealing with more severe issues from the past, a different approach is needed to what I'm going to be discussing today. Because on the subject of, of traumatic events from the past, sometimes things are so severe and so extreme that the events get stored in the body in the body-mind and are much deeper and denser and cause much more severe problems than what I'd like to talk about today, which isn't to say that what I'm going to talk about today doesn't cause pain and problems. It, it really does. But it's um, what I'd like to specifically talk about today are the sort of feelings and memories that arise from the past that often pull us away from the present moment. So when we are on the spiritual path, the spiritual journey, or engaged in meditation, naturally, we're, we're all about the present moment, you know, bring your, bring your focus and attention entirely into the present moment. And when you do it, <laughs> when you actually get there, it's amazing. It really is. It's to, to fully realize and immerse yourself fully into the single infinite present moment, the eternal now. It's a wonderful experience and it's a revelation. You recognize and realize very deeply experientially that it's only ever now. There is no past. There is no future. It's only ever now. I mean, what an amazing thing to discover. And we want to stay in that for for as long as possible. And a lot of people find over, over some time with some disappointment that they can't help but begin to get lost in thoughts about the past and thoughts about the future for various reasons that I'll be discussing today. I'd like to focus specifically today on the past and I'll do another episode specifically on the future because there are many uh, thoughts and feelings about the past that arise within the present moment that have our attention and our mind wandering backwards. So we're going to be taking a look at guilt. That's, that's, uh, that's a very common one that uh, interferes with finding the present moment. It's a very common one when you sit there, finally find presence, and you feel that sense of relief, some very old guilty memories rise up. We also get a lot of regret. We get embarrassment. We get nostalgia and happy memories even can pull us away from the present moment. And I'd like to discuss one, why this happens and two, how we can overcome this when we are sat in meditation or we are just practicing presence in our daily life. How do we reconcile this when we have recognized it's only ever the present moment? And yet I have these very insistent thoughts and memories about past events that simply won't leave me alone. And this can cause some doubt because naturally one is going to wonder, well, if I'm having thoughts and feelings about the past and images about the past, then surely the past must exist. It can't always be the present moment because we generally have an idea that we're sort of moving out of the past and moving into the future. But that's, that's, a, that's a framework and a structure, a method of perceiving the world that we were taught, but it's not accurate. It's not the 
it's not the uh, it's not the reality of our experience. The reality of our experience is that it's always now, and it's because of this habitual way that we perceive time, that the mind perceives time, that we feel like the past is a real, tangible place. We we feel like the past is a thing. And we have all these crazy notions and ideas of maybe one day we'll build a machine in which we can travel back, <laughs> travel back into the into the past. I wouldn't advise it because there's nothing to travel back into. And that's the first thing I'd like to talk to talk to you about today is the nature of presence. It's a crucial understanding. If you have found that you do manage to find the present moment, to immerse yourself in presence, but you can't seem to drop the old habitual framework of perceiving time of past and future are both real things that exist. It's crucial to understand that when we become present, it's not that we're ignoring the past and ignoring the future. It's not an irresponsible and reckless disregard of reality. What finding the present moment is, is recognising finally the actual reality of the situation. The actual reality of life is you will only ever experience this singular eternal now. It's not like there is a past that you're now choosing to ignore. It's only ever now. And any any spiritual teacher is not trying to is not trying to convince you of this because there's nothing to convince you of. Instead, go to your experience. Go to your experience right now. Let's do it right now, right here, right now. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, it's perfectly safe to do this wherever you are and whatever you are doing. Is it now? (laughs) You can always ask yourself that question, always. Just ask yourself, right, is it now? If you find that you've been lost in thinking about the past, just double check with yourself, is this happening now? And just, it's a sense of only allow yourself to perceive now. Only allow yourself to recognize whatever is happening now. If it's a memory from the past, well, the memory is arising in the now, but the past isn't reoccurring. The past can't reoccur. So another great exercise we can do. Let's look for the past. Do it right now. Let's just have a look. Where where is the past? We spend so much time thinking about it. We spend so much time ruminating about it and having all these memories. So, okay, it must be important. Let's have a look for it. We need to, you know, we need to find this past so we can fix it. (laughs) And uh, no matter how hard you look, you realize, oh, there's no such thing. The most common objection to this is that, okay, that makes some kind of sense. However, I have memories. I have strong, powerful memories about the past, and I remember events that happened in the past that aren't happening now. But what that proves is that memories exist. It doesn't prove that the past exists. Your memories only prove that memories exist. And if I were to ask you, when do memories occur? Memories don't occur in the future. And memories don't occur in the past. Memories can only happen now. You can only ever experience now. So there should be a huge sense of relief with this because one of the the barriers in trying to stay present, to to remain in the present moment, is this, we, we feel like we need to apply intense focus at all times. And this stern, you know, clench teeth, like, like, <laughs> like really clench your fists, clench your teeth and tighten up and really focus on the now. But really, 
the the relief that comes from letting go of all of that by truly recognizing experientially it doesn't matter what you believe it doesn't matter what thoughts come up whether you think about the past or the future it's all only ever happening now anyway it's not a choice it's not a choice <laughs> It's you, it, and it doesn't matter what you choose to believe. It's like, well, I choose to believe that the past does exist. Well, you're choosing to believe that in the now. You can take refuge in reality itself. You, you always have a safe fallback position, no matter what is going on. If you're, if you're experiencing painful mind states relating to the past and the future, you can always fall back into the position of, but what is the reality of life? What is reality? If you disregard all thoughts, feelings, memories, perceptions, all of it, disregard all of that, and instead take your take yourself into the fallback position of, what is the reality now? And you can go, oh, and it really feels like that. It really, it's the, oh, okay. Once again, I was lost in thoughts and I was lost in a painful mind state and I'd forgotten the reality of the situation. So although the common the common objection of, yes, but what about my memories? It, I, w- I will concede <laughs> it's a tricky one to overcome because I... N- Nobody can doubt the experiences that you've had. If you've had those experiences, then yes, you've had those experiences. And we run the risk in spiritual practice of dismissing or pretending that past experiences didn't happen. That is not what we're saying. And that's a trap that you can fall into. I'm going to talk about that when we when we get into the subject of guilt in that It's not about pretending the past didn't happen. You have to recognize that, yes, something happened. Yes, you had those experiences. It's just the nature and reality of those experiences is different to how we've habitually been perceiving it. We feel like we had an experience and then moved moved along into the next one as though we're moving along a sort of timeline from one experience to the next, when the reality of the situation is that it's there is a singular eternal now and experiences are continually unfolding within the now. The experience is evolving within the now. It's it's been it's been referred to as the vertical dimension sometimes, whereas the the time model of perceiving the universe is a sort of horizontal model from like left to right, incidentally, because that's the way we read, interestingly enough, from left to right. Um, and interestingly enough, in Eastern cultures, they often uh, read in a, in a vertical line. That tells us a lot. But um, yeah, so if we we read from left to right, and that tends to be how we perceive the past and the future, we sort of perceive that the past kind of happened on the left, <laughs> and we're moving along a timeline into the right. That's not the reality. Uh, the reality is that we have an experience that is continually unfolding. So memories exist, yes, but the past, when we look for it, simply doesn't exist. So we're not dismissing the experience, because you will find if you try to dismiss the experience and pretend it doesn't exist, it will come back 10 times stronger, particularly if it's a painful memory. Because, um, well, I mean, it is a great analogy that it's very hard to let go of something that is holding on to you. And uh, if something's holding on to you, it probably needs some attention. You know, uh, we may be done with the past, but the past isn't always done with us. Now, continuing on the subject of memories here, as people are very uh, protective (laughs) over their memories, say, no, you can't tell me that the past doesn't exist because my life exists in the past. You know, there's this silly little thing called the now, but the vast majority of my life was in the past and the vast majority of my life, therefore, is in my memories. 
But I'll challenge that and say you already can't remember the vast majority of your life. Where is it? Where Where is your life? All of the years that you've lived, where is that now? You could say in your head, but there's no evidence of that. The, I'm talking about the experience of your life. Where is it? You can't experience all the years that have gone before because they've gone and they don't exist. There's no such thing. Memories exist, yes, but the memories happen now. You already can't remember the vast, vast majority of your life. And what you can remember is probably wildly inaccurate. If I was to ask you, what did you have for dinner three weeks ago? You probably wouldn't be able to remember that. And uh, if you can't remember that, what else do you think you can't remember? You, you would think, oh, that's because I only remember the important stuff. No, there will be a lot. There will be a lot <laughs> that happened in your life that you simply could not call to mind, even if you tried your absolute hardest. And a fantastic is one of my favorite exercises that we can do to really it, it makes you stop and go, huh? Yeah, I hadn't thought about that is to cast your mind back, your whole mind, all of your senses, everything, your whole being back five years and really try to remember who you were five years ago. What did you wear? What did you look like? What what aftershave or perfume did you wear? What was your job? What was your friendship circle? Five years ago, who was that person? And then go back another 10 years. And who was that person? What did they look like? How did, how did they perceive the world? What did they look like? What did they, what, what was their friendship circle like? What was their job? What was their work situation? And you can do this at many different points throughout your life. If you cast your mind back five years, 10 years, 20 years, and you'll, you'll suddenly become aware, oh yeah, there was that whole person that I'd completely forgotten about. Now, you can call that person to mind as a memory in the present, but it's really quite shocking when you realize you've already been several different people within one single lifetime. Before we did that little exercise just then, you'd probably forgotten all about those, those past versions of you. you, they, you and, and if we hadn't done that exercise, you might have gone the entire rest of your life without recalling them. So it's worth doing every now and then to stop and recall and just reflect on just how how strong this autopilot is that we get into. But it's important to recognize that you already can't remember the vast majority of your life anyway. And it's it's only ever now, regardless of what you believe. So we can let go of this trying to hold on to the now. There's a lot of a lot of people in spiritual practice have fallen into this trap and are trying desperately. They say, I, I keep losing the present moment. I keep I keep losing presence. That's not possible. That's actually not possible. You can relax. Even if you've been lost in thinking about the past for hours, you actually did all of that thinking within the present. Now, yes, your attention was pulled into the past, and that's what we're trying to stop. That's what we're trying to train ourselves into, is to be able to... It's not even training, because training implies effort as well. It's more about an understanding, an experiential understanding, not just a cognitive understanding, but experiencing the reality of now always. It's only ever now. So let's deal with some of what comes up, the, the trickier parts of the past, because there are certain feelings, in my experience anyway, I can only ever speak to my experience, but in my experience, there are certain elements of the past and the future that are more persistent than others. And the first one is guilt. Now, I've got a quite an interesting relationship with guilt because I was an alcoholic for 10 years and fully recovered now. But naturally, after, in the aftermath of that addiction, the guilt is, uh, is, can, be, can be debilitating. 
absolutely debilitating. And I fell into a bit of a spiritual trap when I came out of my addiction. And I, I had a huge kind of revelation when I, um, I started doing my fitness training. I started looking into recovery methods, how I'm going to recover from alcohol. And I started losing all this weight and getting help for my mental health and all of this going on. It, I mean, a massive transformation, really. It was absolutely incredible. And one of the mistakes that I made is because I got really into meditation at that time and found the present moment entirely. So occasionally in meditation, when I found the present moment, all of my guilt disappeared. And that was such an enormous relief because you carry a lot of guilt around with you, whether you want to admit it or not, when you're an addict or a recovered addict, um, you, the amount of guilt that you carry around is pretty, pretty staggering for good reason. You know, you've been doing something wrong. <laughs> so so you're, you're supposed to feel some level of guilt. And when I found this meditation and found the present moment, the works of Eckhart Tolle and everything, I thought, oh, great. I don't have to feel this guilt anymore because the past didn't happen. And it kind of worked. I've got, I've got to say, uh, and in my defense, by doing that meditation, it allowed me to let go of the guilt and let go of the past so that I could move forwards. And hey, something must have worked. Something must have worked because I managed it. And by using the meditation and finding the present moment, it, it meant that I could do all of the activities that I needed to do in order to recover fully. To, to lose the weight, to become a functioning member of society, to help my mental health, and to stop drinking. And the, the trap I didn't realize that I was falling into is that actually an element of guilt is kind of necessary in order to grow. And this is a, a, an element of spirituality and just personal development and healing from the past that a lot of people miss is that pain is actually quite useful. <laughs> like the same with physical pain, that we we have to be kind of glad that there's some pain there because it tells you what not to do. And guilt in a, a reasonable amount of guilt is necessary because if it wasn't for some level of guilt, you would never change. And there's a lot of people who are trying to say they never feel guilty about anything. And I would recommend that you avoid those people. Because if you never in your life ever felt guilt, you are a psychopath. There is something drastically wrong if you never feel any sense of guilt whatsoever. Some of it is necessary because just as with physical pain, sometimes we have this sort of emotional pain as a method of navigating. You know, if you've done something wrong and you feel guilty, that's actually a sign something's working. If you it, you experience this when you're a child, like it, let's say you thought you you for some reason impulsively that day you like stole a Mars bar from the from the news agents and got away with it. You know, you slipped it into your pocket, nobody noticed. You walked home, and for a moment you were like, "Oh, amazing! Like I've got a free Mars bar here." And then you uh, go home, and this feeling in your stomach is just like gnawing at your stomach, and you feel like hot at the back of your neck, and it's on your mind. And suddenly you've got visions of like police knocking at your door, and you look at like your parents, and you just think, Do they know? How does everyone know? This paranoia starts building up in you. And before you know it, you've sprinted back to the shop and tried to replace the Mars bar before anyone notices. <laughs> Now, in, in that instance, you've got to think, well, actually, it's a good job that those feelings were there. It's Although it's incredibly painful to have that knot in the stomach, to be worried about the police showing up, to be worried about, oh, does anyone know what's going to happen to me if people find out? It's good that those feelings were there. 
because that's what made you go back and put the Mars bar back. So it's exactly the same as we grow up into adult life. You feel guilty about you haven't treated your partner very well. You didn't treat your your boyfriend or your girlfriend particularly well. You lost your temper about something or you haven't been paying them enough attention. And you feel guilty about this. You think actually they deserve a little bit more than this. They deserve better than that. And so you start, because of the guilt, you start making some changes to yourself and to your life. And that's a good thing. The problem only happens when we are overwhelmed by guilt and we can become quite obsessed with it. And this can happen in the present moment when we're trying to find presence and trying to awaken and become enlightened. Because when we find the present moment, what we're doing is we're trying to dissolve the ego. The ego starts to fall away because ultimately you are infinite universal consciousness, not the individual finite temporary separate self. And the ego knows that its days are numbered when you experience the reality of the eternal present moment. The ego knows that its days are numbered, and so it will start bringing all of the worst guilt from the past that it can. And it will bring it right to the forefront of your attention because it's trying to convince you. It's trying to say, no, 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 you can't be happy in the present moment because you're an awful person because of all this stuff that you've done. And uh, becoming present is going to be very, uh, (laughs) is very selfish because you need to feel awful about all the awful things that you've done in your life. Now, there's, as I say, there is some level of guilt that is necessary. And I would say, look, you need to do your time. And this is the, so the mistake I made is trying to just completely spiritually bypass my guilt which for some reason kind of worked for a while, but then it came back extra strong later on. And the more awake I got and the more enlightened I became, if such a thing even exists, the more I realized, actually, there is some stuff here that I did when I was an alcoholic. There is some stuff that I did that I need to feel the guilt of that. I have to. I have to in order to heal in order to let it go finally i needed to turn around and look and really feel it just feel back at the time that you know um, i was ringing in sick to work and i wasn't sick i was hung over the times that relationships didn't work out because of my alcoholism the times that i just wasn't a functioning member of society and i hurt the people around me there is no getting away from it. If you've done something wrong, just feel the guilt. Maybe it, maybe I needed to build up a certain level of uh, maturity. Uh, we could even say spiritual maturity in order to have the strength to face it fully. Once you turn and face it fully, the pain kind of begins to diminish. It's like chewing gum. You chew the gum until the flavor's gone then spit it out. Once you've chewed the gum and the flavor's gone, spit it out and be done with it. Because the ego doesn't want you to spit it out. It's the ego that wants you to chew that gum forever. Because in in some ways, the ego is the gum. (laughs) It is the guilt. The ego is your obsession with the past. Because the, the ego will do anything it can to pull your attention away from the present moment. And so it will continually bring up these guilty memories until you just turn and face it and go, right, OK, let's have it then. Let's feel it. Let's just feel the guilt and let it come up. Let it rise into the into the space of awareness, but approach the guilt as infinite universal consciousness, not as an individual, temporary, finite, separate self. And you will find the pain there is bearable. Because you're then approaching it from a much more reasonable and rational place, 
you can then learn from the guilt without falling into despair. Because the ego wants you to think, I am such a terrible person, I'm never going to change my ways. That's what the ego wants. That's what, in my case, that's what my addiction wanted. You're terrible, you're an alcoholic, you're always going to be an alcoholic, you've got no chance, buddy. But from this, from the perspective and standpoint of infinite universal consciousness, it's just a feeling. And so this guilt is allowed to rise up. You can feel the guilt. You can look at what the guilt is trying to tell you. It, 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 you know, it's not right to treat your partner badly. It's not right to steal. It's not right to. It's your own intuition, your own inherent conscience that you're acting against. And so taking a look at the guilt, feeling the guilt, and now from a much more reasonable and rational place, you can decide, right, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. And then it's done. But I would say with guilt in particular, there is an element of you just have to do your time. And you might not hear a lot of uh, spiritual teachers saying that, but I would highly recommend it. I believe you go for when you finally find the present moment, a lot of things fall away. But anything that doesn't fall away and sticks around for a long time, pay a little bit of attention to it. Because I would be willing to bet that something needs to be worked through. But my best advice is work through it as consciousness. Don't work through it as an ego. Because the ego will just loves it. The ego just wants to stay in regret and guilt forever. Here's the other sort of perspective that it's a really good thing. In order to let go of something, let's say let's say you're feeling particularly guilty about something and it's really interfering with your ability to stay present. Here's my best advice for you to understand you are not that important. That might be hard to hear, but I'm telling you, let go of your guilt because you are just not that important. You haven't hurt people as much as you think you have. You, you're, you're beating yourself up about stuff that other people have probably long since forgotten. The amount of times that I've gone to apologize to people and they say, what are you talking about? I can't, you know, I can't even remember the incident that you're talking about. And you're like, huh, that's strange. And that because because the ego loves guilt, it's trying to ramp up your importance. This is quite a subtle nuance, okay? This is quite a subtle trick, a subtle play of the ego, because you must be important. If you if you feel ultra guilty about something, you must feel very significant. You must feel like you have a very significant impact, and um, you, it's just not. Maybe you're maybe this. I mean, where where are these events now that you're feeling so guilty about? Where where are they? Is it really so bad? Are you sure? Are you sure? Once you've done your time, you'll be able to let the guilt go. I mean, imagine if you're. I imagine there's a lot of pri a lot of prisoners say when they finally got locked up. When a criminal gets caught and gets locked up, they actually say it's a it's a sense of relief. They say, finally, finally, I'm being held accountable for all of this stuff that I've done. I felt absolutely out of control out in the world. When you finally get locked up, it's like it's the prim primary feeling is one of relief, I guess, as well, because then you can just focus on doing your time. So if there's stuff from the past that you need to work through and guilt can be very toxic, Guilt can be can be debilitating because it's always going to be working there in the back of your mind. Whenever you go to do anything, your overactive sense of guilt is going to get in the way and diminish your enjoyment of whatever it is that you're trying to do. That brings us to regret. Regret. So with regret, we are either regretting that we made the wrong choice or we're regretting that we didn't make a choice. We're regretting the thing. We often regret the things that we didn't do just as much as we regret the things that we did do. When we look back and go, wow, I missed out on an opportunity there. 
I mean, yeah, <laughs> like we often look back and say, well, I, I wish I could have done things, uh, you know, in a different way or. But the thing about regret is and in, in many ways, regret is a regret proves that it's only ever the present moment, because <laughs> when you look back at look, it, why do, you, you look back and say, let's say let's take an example. Let's use the example of you you took a job that you now hate <laughs> and you look back and you think, why on earth did I take this job? Now, that's because we own because it's only ever the present moment. You can when you when you analyze your past self, you're you're assuming that your past self is your present self because it's only ever the present moment. So you're intuiting that back in the past, you were your present self. You weren't. You weren't. Because if you'd have known differently, if you'd have had the information that you have now, if you were the person that you are today, you wouldn't have taken the job. Right? If that was the case, you wouldn't have taken the job. Hindsight is 2020 vision. We always look back with 2020 vision and go, right, I got it. This is what I should have done. And then we think, how could I have been so stupid? You weren't stupid. You made the best decision you could based on the available information that you had at the time. Now, as the present moment evolved and more experiences happened and you gained knowledge and you gained insight and you gained wisdom, now, now you know, ah, okay, this job no longer serves me. But that is not an indication that you're an idiot. <laughs> it's an indication that you are a learning, growing, evolving human being. That's what that is an indication of. And if you knew better back then, you'd have done something differently. This happens also with relationships. Why did I get into a relationship with that? Whenever you've made a mistake, whenever you've made a misstep in life, you did the wrong thing. You, you, you're just regretting something that you did in the past and it's interfering with your ability to enjoy the present moment. You have to learn <laughs> to give yourself a bit of a break. Give yourself a bit of a break because ultimately you've got to look at it like this as well. Who's actually making all of these decisions anyway? If you, if you, it, before any sort of spiritual practice, the habitual way we look at things is that you're, you're a sort of calculator. Your brain is a kind of calculator and you're, it's ultimately, you are, you are ultra responsible for how your life goes and every single decision you make. And, um, if you, if you made the wrong decision, that was a dreadful, terrible error. And now it's your fault that you've completely messed your life up. And also, if you made the right decision, well, hey, you know, out of boy, like good, good for you. <laughs> Great job. Um, but when you get into the spiritual practice and you realize you're not an individual temporary finite ego and you are, in fact, infinite universal consciousness, you start to think, well, actually, hang on a minute then. Who's actually making all of these decisions? I mean, there is so much about you and your life that you are not in control of. It will stun you when you really start to look at it. Because you can ask yourself, do I beat my heart? Let's just start with something very basic. Do I beat my heart? No. Do I breathe my lungs? No. Do, am I involved in any of my bodily functions? Well, not many of them. There's some that I seem to be partly in voluntary control of and others that I seem to be in total voluntary control of. But there's also a huge amount of my own body body that I'm simply not. Oh, oh I didn't design this body. I didn't uh, I didn't decide how it's going to work. I, and I as far as I know, I just kind of operate it. That's how it feels. You kind of feel like you got dropped into your brain when you were a kid. At some point, they sort of implanted you into your brain. And now you're operating this vehicle, which is a kind of human suit, a kind of human exoskeleton that you pilot around and you better do a good job. <laughs> That's our general kind of understanding of how the body works. But if we investigate that 
And uh, we'll do a little exercise right here. If I ask you, what is your next thought going to be? Can you predict your next thought? Sorry, I was just plugging my charger in. Can you predict your next thought? Um, probably not. I'd be willing to bet that you, you, not with any degree of success anyway, or, or let's go even further and say, well, what are you going to be thinking about five minutes from now? What are you going to be thinking about 10 minutes from now? So if you're not in control of your thoughts, if you don't, I mean, let, let's decide, can you decide what you're going to be thinking about at nine o'clock tomorrow morning? Can you decide that? Let's decide that now. Um, there's no way that you can predict that because you don't know what the situation is going to be at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. You just don't know what is what the situation in your life will be at that time. So there is absolutely no way of knowing what thoughts or feelings you're going to be having at that time. It could be a good morning. It could be a disaster. There could be some kind of catastrophe or you might win the lottery or you just don't know what the situation is going to be. Therefore, is it not then reasonable to assume, as you don't know what your next thought is going to be, you don't know what your decision is going to be based on that thought? So if where, where are the thoughts coming from? The thoughts that we decide to act on, the, where, where do they come from? Where are they arising from? What do they arise out of? We don't know. So who is actually making these decisions? You could even if you make a decision, where did the thought to make the decision come from? Where do the thoughts to make certain decisions come from? Where do they come from? And if you if you're saying my brain, I'm going to challenge you and say, what is your experience of your brain? Have you experienced a brain or, or do you experience thoughts? Do you experience a brain or do you experience feelings and images and sensations and perceptions. You've never seen your brain. You don't know that you are your brain. So if we don't know where our thoughts are coming from, we don't know how we're making these decisions because there are so many factors involved in every single decision that we make, we can't take the total responsibility for every decision that we make because it's almost infinite. There's an infinite number of possibilities and an infinite number of variables. So give yourself a break, all right? When it comes to regret, you did the you did the wrong thing or you didn't do something or you should have done something better or this, that and the other, it's a total waste of time. It is a complete waste of any mental energy that you have. Now, it can be useful to take a look at the past and think, well, obviously I, I enjoy certain things and I don't enjoy other things. Therefore, I want to do, I, I want to make more of the decisions that go well for me and I want to make less of the decisions that go badly for me. Okay, that's perfectly natural, perfectly reasonable. And that kind of intuition does actually come from consciousness, not the ego. So that kind of happens automatically. If you made a dreadful mistake and you know it was a mistake, then you're not going to make that again. We don't need to consistently replay memories of the past in order to consistently make the <laughs> make the right decision. Once you've learned the lesson, you can now move on. It's like riding a bicycle. You won't forget. If you made an error, you're not going to make that error again. From the perspective of infinite universal consciousness, which is incredibly wise, ultimately wise, you're only going to have one bad relationship because you have that bad relationship, learn everything you needed to learn, decide you realize, right, that I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to find the polar opposite of that. You find the polar opposite of that. Presto, bingo, you're happy forever. Live happy ever after. That's what infinite universal, con that's how the infinite universal consciousness operates. The ego the ego loves a bad relationship. So the ego will go, okay, that one didn't work out. Now to do the exact same thing again. <laughs>
and keeps repeating the same mistake over and over again in a constantly stuck, egoic time loop. So once you can find, once you release yourself from the grip of the ego, you find that you start making better decisions anyway, because you start making wiser choices. You actually start making more selfless choices. And you're, you're no longer chasing things that you don't even want anyway. That's what the, that's how the ego operates. The ego thinks it wants certain things that it doesn't want, which is why you're permanently dissatisfied from life. Because even if you, in, you achieve that thing and obtain that thing, you realize it's ultimately not satisfying. But from the perspective of infinite universal consciousness, you make far wiser choices calmer choices and better decisions because you're acting from a much more rational place, not an egoic place that always is fearful or filled with desire. In fact, I would say in my experience from finding true inner peace, you actually just make less decisions. That's what ends up happening. You don't really regret the past so much because, hey, well, it brought you here, didn't it? It, all paths ultimately lead to the top of the mountain. Now, we might we might take different paths. You might have a longer road and a slower road, or and somebody might have a steeper road, but a shorter road. But ultimately, it doesn't really matter. We're all going to make it eventually. We're all going to make it to the top of the mountain, ultimately. It's just a matter of um, how you want to get there, I suppose. But I found, ultimately, the more... The more I settled into inner peace, the more I settled into the present moment, the more I found I actually just make less decisions, just fewer decisions overall, because you begin to just watch. You can sit back and just watch, just watch. I'm just watching. It's akin to the feeling of, let's say you're driving a car and um, for, for some reason, you take you decide to take your hands off the wheel just just to, to it's like it's almost like just check it just checking something a second you take your hands off the wheel and realize that the car is driving itself and always has been that that's what it feels like to recognize infinite universal consciousness and that there is no ego it's an illusion the car has been driving itself the entire time i've got i've had very little to do with any of it and you find that if you take your hands off the wheel completely not literally, of course, if you are driving whilst listening to this podcast, I know a lot of people are, don't take your hands off the wheel. I'm speaking metaphorically. Please do not do that. If it, metaphorically you take your hands off the wheel and realize that actually your, your body and mind seems to operate according to its own will, try it, try it. Try just making no decisions and see what happens. In a way, trying to not think is to demonstrate to you that you can't not think. It's There's always going to be thoughts arising. But if there's always going to be thoughts arising, whether you decide to or not, then who's really in control here? So regretting the past is possibly the biggest waste of time that you could ever indulge in. And again, the ego likes it. The ego loves regret. Because it can point fingers and go, you're awful, you're terrible. And regret reaffirms the ego's false sense of control. Because if you can regret something, that implies that you're fully in control of the entire universe. <laughs> that's, what, that's why the ego holds on to regret. Because it loves the idea that it is in control that you are in control. And if you made a mistake, that's because you didn't have the right information. And it's because you, you're you an idiot and you made the wrong decision and you should have done this and you should have done that. If your thoughts are too filled with shoulds, then something's gone wrong. Just, just trust me, should shouldn't be in your vocabulary. So the ego loves regret. And, uh, uh, if it, with with all of these things, guilt, regret, and anything from the past that hurts, if you cut it off at the source, if you cut it off at ego, you will have a bit of residual negative feeling about the past that needs to be chewed through, 
like the chewing gum, chew it up, then spit it out, and it won't come back again because you've you've cut the root. The root is the ego. And the ego loves guilt and regret because it implies a sense of control. And then that's going to re- reinforce to you that you, you know, you walk around tense and tight, walking on eggshells, walking on a tightrope because you just want to make the right decision at all times. Well, I got news for you. You're not making these decisions anyway. <laughs> so relax, relax. Now, that's going to bring us to happy memories. What do we do about our happy memories? Because this is a common objection to finding the present moment too. What about all of the stuff from the past that is a pleasant memory for me, that I enjoy reminiscing about, that I enjoy that I enjoy the nostalgia. <laughs> um, so what what to do about that? Because if I'm fully present, surely I won't be able to enjoy my happy memories. Well, the first thing I'd like to do is another little meditative exercise right here, which is the refeeling exercise. So I want you to look back at a time and take your whole being back to a time when you were happy, when you were content, you felt safe, you felt secure, you felt fulfilled. There must be some time in your life, even if it was very brief, even if it was just moments, you may have to go back a long way. Just have a refeel of what that time felt like. And it might sound like I'm bringing up a memory here. I'll, I'll indulge you. Let's do it. Bring up a memory. Bring a memory up of a very happy time. And close your eyes if you can. If you're not driving, close your eyes if it's safe to do so and really feel it. So at that time that you were happy, for me, it was when I was out on my moped when I was 16. And we and the sun was beating down. It was a lovely summer day, summer holidays. And I want you to think about what are some of the senses, the sense memories that you had at that time. So what perfume or aftershave were you wearing? What did your hair product smell like? So go to smell because that evokes memory. So let's go to smell. What what could you smell at that time that you were happy? And really get this nostalgia going now. And what were some of the foods that you ate at that time? Were you just discovering a certain food at that time? So let's get a taste. And what was the number one pop song at the time? What was that little, the little earworm song that was just constantly playing at the time? And it just evokes that happy memory in you, that summer holiday memory. And what sort of clothes did you wear? What did that feel like at the time? Like what what was your favorite t-shirt or jeans or whatever you were wearing at the time? Like how did that feel? Now let's really bring it up. Get really unique because this is going to be a unique memory purely for you here, an individual memory. Really do it. What could you smell? What could you taste? What did what could you feel? How did it feel doing that activity or during that time? How did it feel when you woke up in the morning and you had that energy and life and joy and vibrance. Bring the senses in and really start to ramp up the intensity and the, the vividness of those senses. Really do it. I bet you can do it. I bet you can. Now, are you there? Are you there? Bring the memory up. Really feel those senses. Now, I imagine that is evoking in you a long buried feeling of happiness, a long buried feeling of happiness. Now, focus on the feeling of happiness. Focus on that sensation of happiness, the sensation itself of that joy, that love, that freedom, that comfort, the feeling itself. It's going to try and disappear. I know, I know. Don't panic. Don't panic. It's not going to go anywhere. Trust me, it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to try and it feels like it's trying to escape, but just keep re-evoking it through the senses. What could you smell? What could you hear? What could you taste? What could you feel? Just keep re-evoking, re-evoking. Remember that happy, that happy, happy memory, comfort, joy, love, security, freedom, compassion, all of those lovely feelings. Okay. Now, 
Keep focusing attention on the feeling and begin to drop away the visual image that you have in your head of that time. Drop away the visual image, the feeling's still there, the visual image can go. Now drop away the senses, anything that we could smell at the time, don't worry about that. Don't worry about what you could hear or what you could what you could taste or what you could feel. Don't worry about that. Now we're just focusing on the feeling. Just the feeling, the feeling itself. Just the feeling, that's it. Now, when is that feeling happening? When is that feeling happening? Right. It's happening now. It's happening now. So relax, okay? You haven't lost anything. That that happy memory that you have hasn't gone anywhere. The happiness you felt at that time is still there. That moment is still now. It never left. It never left. What left was you. Your mind left. You got distracted. You went somewhere else. That happiness that you felt at that time, it wasn't evoked by the situation. The happiness that you felt at that time, supposedly in the past, is your true nature, your true being. Sometimes when the circumstances around us align, and we accept and say yes because we we like the circumstances, it realigns us with the present moment. But this is a misperception, because then we believe that it's the circumstances that created the happiness. That is not true. Happiness is always there. Occasionally, circumstances happen that facilitate our remembering of our innate nature which is infinite universal consciousness occurring within an eternal now. So, this this cherished memory that you have is a misperception. What can make you happy is recognising the present moment. And you will be right back there, no matter what the situation is, even if you're at work, you will feel like you're on summer holiday. And Yes, it's that good. That's what we're aiming for, all right, team? So so don't settle for less, all right? Because that's the feeling that we're aiming for, is that exact happy feeling that we just evoked. That is the feeling of awakening. That's how it feels. It's the universal saying yes to everything that's happening now, and that will realign you with the infinite universal consciousness. Now, isn't it interesting that before we did that exercise, you'd completely forgotten that feeling even existed. You can't even remember what that feeling felt like. But now you know, because it's not like that situation has happened again. All we did was evoke it through certain senses, through a through a thought exercise, and re-evoked that feeling. But you can turn towards that feeling at any time at any time. My let the light in meditation, that's on my YouTube channel, it focuses entirely on that. I recommend go check it out. So that's that's my response to when people say, but what about my happy memories? I would say, actually, more often than not, our happy memories are obscuring our happiness in the now. Because if we're, if we're looking towards the past and saying our happiness existed in the past, you're automatically denying the present moment. You're saying, I can't be happy now because I was happy in the past. I was happy back then. I'm not happy now. So you're choosing to cherish the memory, thinking that's going to evoke some kind of happiness. But what you're actually doing is denying your happiness in the now. So here's what we can do instead of that. Instead of reminiscing about a happy memory, just bring the feeling up. Forget the content of the memory, right? It's over. I'm sorry, it's been and gone. I don't care what the situation was that evoked such happiness. Forget that situation. Instead, let the feeling come up. Let that wonderful love and light come up and shine forth in you always. And then you're going to have far more positive experiences in your daily life and you won't have to keep looking back 
towards happy memories. There's nothing wrong with happy memories, obviously. It's good. They can be very reaffirming to to help you remember, yes, life is worth living after all. But eventually, eventually, we want to make our life in the present as happy as that. And as happy as that, always. Always. That's the awakening feeling. That's the enlightenment. To have that happy feeling at all times not just reserved for one or two very brief moments of happiness that we then have to clutch hold of until our last breath. That's not a happy life. That is not a happy life. We can't have a series of happy moments and that's it. No, that's not right. It's not. We need to find that feeling of ha- inner inner peace, inner light, inner love, inner joy that can radiate out from you at all times. So the nostalgia over the past and the happy memories, you could see it, you could perceive it as a, as the infinite universal consciousness trying to send you a little clue. It's just trying to re-evoke that feeling within you. But don't make the mistake of thinking happiness happened in the past and it can't happen now. What infinite universal consciousness is trying to do is just show you a glimmer When you get that happy memory come up and you feel that pang of nostalgia, oh, I wish I could go back. I wish I could go back. If you feel that I wish I could go back, change that to I want to feel that same way now. And then without trying to change your external circumstances, realign your internal circumstances in order to evoke that feeling. How do we do that? By letting go of our resistance to the present moment. How do we let go of our resistance to the present moment? By ceasing to take our attention back into the past. Instead, just allow your attention to sink into the reality of now. And you will find so much to be happy about today. So much to be happy about. Tiny little things. You, you, will, you will be stunned. At just how happy you are, just at the taste of water, just at the at looking at the moon, just at just at walking through your house, just at breathing. When you're truly present, you will be stunned at the tiny things that you took totally for granted and you look straight past. I was out walking earlier and I walked past a stinging nettle. And I look. I stopped and I looked at this stinging nettle and I, st- I stood there with my jaw open. The way the sunlight just bounced off and I thought the darkness of the green on this stinging nettle and you could see the little needles all glistening over the leaf. One single stinging nettle. And yet I was overcome with the beauty, the joy, the wonder. I felt like a child again. Because the smell of the stinging nettle as well. And I was like, whoa, I wanted to like show people. I wanted to grab people off the street and say, look at this. Now, I know that makes me sound completely insane. And that's why I didn't grab anyone off the street. Because, you know, sometimes you have to play the game a little bit. (laughs) You know, keep a lid on things, as it were. You can't go grabbing any old NPC off the street. Like, so... But I I say that as an example of you will be surprised at the things you can find beauty, joy and wonder in, regardless of the situation. If you remember those happy memories, I bet you weren't expecting to feel happy at that time or as happy as you were. It's just that circumstances aligned that your resistance to the present moment dropped. That's why we're happy on holiday. That's why we're happy around people that we love. Because we are no longer resisting the present moment. Now imagine if you could stop resisting the present moment at work. What if you could stop resisting the present moment whilst you're exercising? What if you could stop resisting the present moment when you have an, a craving for that thing that you're trying to quit, the addiction you're trying to quit? What if you could stop resisting the present moment when you felt dissatisfaction and unhappiness and frustration and anger and bitterness and all of the common negative mind states that that take our joy away from us? What if we could just accept everything and say, yes, this too, this too, this too, externally and internally? 
even if you do find yourself regretting, feeling regret and resentment and guilt and shame and everything, you feel all of that. Okay, well, here I am feeling that, this too, in the present moment. Uh, There's no resistance to it. After all, it's already here. I didn't decide for it to be here. It's already here. Without the resistance, there's this background of peace and joy that just begins to pervade through your entire being. Hmm, maybe it takes maybe it takes a little bit of practice, but you'd be surprised at the amount of things that you can <laughs> you can say yes to. Because ultimately you realize you don't have a choice. It's here anyway. And if it's here anyway, just say yes to it. Say yes to everything that's happening in the now, and you'd be surprised at how much of that happiness and that feeling of joy arises within you. Oh, I mean, I touched on uh, shame and resentment there, but I'm going to have to talk about that in the childhood trauma episode because they're a big part of that. And that's the the far darker, denser, sort of nastier side of the past. This is more the sort of surface level stuff that tends to interfere with your meditation. So yeah, the guilt, the regret, the nostalgia, things like that. But but my, my advice would be the if you if you're truly present, your there your attention is not going to be going towards the past. Because when you are truly present, you don't your mind doesn't need to go anywhere. Anywhere. It comes home. That's what happens. We're not trying to kill the mind. We're not trying to destroy the mind. We we want the mind to come back, to be happy with with infinite universal consciousness. It's been described before as the mind has become the master, but the mind should be the worker. And but we've for some reason we've let go of the reins, and now the mind has become the master of our life. And that's when ego happens. It's running rampant this false sense of control. We want it to come back. If we fully, fully find the present moment, truly here and now in the present moment, eventually the mind, like an unruly dog or an unruly child, eventually comes to sit by your side and everyone can just relax, relax. Now we've talked a lot about memories right here. And I'd like to ask you, what did you forget? What did you forget? But I'm not talking about the ego. I'm not talking about what supposedly happened to this ego in this life. I'm talking about what did you forget? Because there's something, isn't there? Have you ever noticed that? There's something just always, always at the back of your mind. There's some, that, that background sense of something doesn't, something doesn't quite add up about all of this. There's, there's just something. If only I could just put my finger on it. What What's that thing that um, I, f- I feel like I'm kind of forgetting something. There's something I'm missing. What is it that I'm missing? I'm living my life. Everything, I'm doing the best I can in life. I, th- I think I've got everything sorted, but there's just that sense. I feel like I'm forgetting something. And I want you to cast your mind back. Cast your whole being back. To the time before all of this. Before all before all the, the the body and the name and the history and the future and all of the data and all of the events and all of the painful events and all of the happy events and all of the pleasure and all of the pain, all of the suffering, all of the fear, all of the desire, before all of that, before the job, before the people, before the school, before the body, what was it like for you then? Have you really forgotten? Did you forget that? When did you forget that? Can we remember that? What was it like before you were born? You say you can't remember. But what are you aware of when you say you can't remember? Try to remember now. Try to remember the moment before you were born. What can you remember? You can even do this with the mind. You say, oh, it was it was just blank. Was it? How do you know it was blank? How do you know it was blank before you were born? 
How do you know that? Well, you must be you must be aware of that. You must be aware of that blankness. So let's go back. You've forgotten that blankness. You've forgotten that the time before there was any content. You'd forgotten that. The time before there was any content of the mind. The same place you go to when you're in deep, deep sleep. No content of the mind. We could say blankness, we could say void, or we could say peace. Because nothing was happening. Nothing at all. And does that really sound so negative? Total void? No pain, no suffering, no chaos, no more decisions. There was no, did I do the right thing? Did I do the wrong thing? I shouldn't have done that. I should have done this. There was none of that. And before you were born, you forgot that blankness. How can you remember that there was nothing happening? How can you remember that? Unless you were there, how do you know? You are aware that there is something other than the content of the mind. You have now experienced it experientially. You now know there is something other than the content of the mind. If we take our attention away from the mind, that is where attention goes back to and resides at source, the same place that you were before you were born. That is the source from which all memory arises. And ultimately, that's the place we're all going as well. But the whole thing will just go, happen again, repeat again, ad infinitum, it never ends. But you forgot that brief pause in between lives, the beautiful, open space of peace. So it goes, and so it goes, and the book says, we may be done with the past, but the past isn't always done with us. Thank you so much for listening to me, team. It is always a total pleasure to record these I cannot thank you enough for the likes, the subscribes, all of the comments. It is so heartening. I try not to do too much, say too much personal stuff on this because, I've, as you know, I'm trying to completely dissolve my ego. But for some reason, I'm feeling kind of squishy, I guess, right now. But things, it, it's kind of a, a very difficult time for me at the moment. Um, and recording these podcasts has, has been a lifeline, a glimmer of light and hope and joy for me. Um, and recording these has actually given me some sort of meaning and purpose to my life when things have not been quite so amazing. And, um, you know, I guess even us Zen masters have uh, turbulent waters at times, but I just wanted to say thank you for listening, especially if you've listened this far as well. And if you have subscribed and liked and all of that, it does mean a lot because it's giving me a little glimmer of hope for an avenue that I can explore in the future. So truly appreciate it. You can find me on Instagram, Corin underscore Bryant underscore. You can find me on Facebook, Corin Bryant, meditation coach and personal trainer. Obviously, you can find me here on YouTube. You find me on Spotify as well if you wanted to listen on Spotify rather than on YouTube. You can find my complete collection of guided meditations if you've enjoyed some of the meditative exercises that we've done there today. Uh, they're, they're, I do lots of guided meditations based on similar principles. Um, I'll pop the link in the first comment. I can't put it in the description, apparently, because it, <laughs> it affects the algorithm. But anyway, that was The Power of Now What? Episode 12, Letting Go of a Past That No Longer Exists. Thank you so much for listening, team. Take care, be well, and stay present.